Hi everyone, how are you? I hope everyone's in good condition and in the best of health. Um, okay, so welcome again to another episode of Doctors Go Live. So our topic today is about bleeding in pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, may your motherhood journey be smooth sailing until the little one arrives. But be aware of your body in case you are in any danger that affects you and your baby. And uh, how do we uh, usually know this or one of the, the ways for us to know this is um, if you bleed during your pregnancy. But don't take my word for it. Of course, we have to ask an expert. And today we're going to be talking to Dr. Kwek Yak Song, who is the consultant obstetrician and gynecologist from Columbia Asia Hospital Iskandar Putri. Hello, doctor. How are you today? Hi, uh, hi Miss Sakina. Uh, today, okay, but a bit tired because uh, morning we oh. have a few operations. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. So it's a very busy yeah. time. Yeah. In, for, uh, for today, yes. But ho hopefully, yeah. I'm able to present uh, well for everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no sure. lagging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so th there's going to be an increase in population, la. <laughs> especially around <laughs> the poultry area. Okay, come, let's go straight into our topic, which is about bleeding during pregnancy. Um, okay, I understand that you've got some slides uh, for us. Let's take a look at the yes. slides. So that while we... Um, you know, uh, banter about this. There are some pictures to look at. Okay. 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 So uh, actually, this. Okay. Actually, today we are going to present uh, bleeding in pregnancy. This is the second mm -hmm. slide, actually. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, this is mm -hmm. just a brief introduction about bleeding in pregnancy. Why I select this topic is actually um, it's quite common uh, complaint from patient, uh, and yes. actually. They, they wouldn't know uh, what kind of a bleeding is quite uh, mm. scary or the other one is actually is uh, nothing much and depending on uh, various stages during pregnancy as well. So yeah. it's a very common complaint and usually occur in about 20% of the pregnancy. And uh, don't, don't you worry, most of these women go on to have a very healthy pregnancies. Uh, the pregnancy will continue. Uh, we were able to set, settle much of the issue actually. Yeah. Okay. So next, next slide. slide. Okay. Um, I divided the uh, the bleeding in pregnancy into uh, three stages. Uh, yeah. I'm going to talk about bleeding in the first trimester, and subsequently okay. we we'll talk about in uh, during the second trimester and third trimester. Uh, this right. will be a very brief uh, idea. Uh, I won't go uh, into detail for the uh, treatment or management. Is because uh, for that, uh, it's, it's better for the patient to go to their own ONG doctor to look out for help. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to, to let you guys know about some ideas so that you wouldn't feel too nervous. And actually, if let's say things happen, then you roughly you have an, uh, an idea how to handle it. Okay, during the bleeding in the uh, first trimester, actually the most common one will be implantation bleed. Uh, implantation bleed, it means the, the baby actually try to plus into the womb. So during that moment, the, the baby itself, actually, the placenta actually, will try to hold on the womb. So it will like, you know, um, create some like aka effect. You know? The aka will come out and it will go into the, uh, the womb. So during that process, sometimes can uh, cause some bleeding. That is normal. And the, set, the, 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 the other possibility is miscarriage. Um, however, 90% 90, 90 of them, the pregnancy can continue. So miscarriage, actually, most of the time, is just we call it threatened miscarriage. Uh, however, there's various stages. We got some miscarriage that we cannot stop it at all. Some miscarriage, it become like incomplete and they will, they will bleed more. Some miscarriages, it's become uh, gotten infected and definitely need to be uh, treated. But most of the time, it's just threatened. Okay, then uh, we got other bleeding possibilities at topic pregnancy, which is the location is not inside the womb, but outside of the womb. Uh, it can be at the tubes, it can be at the ovary, it can be at the angle of the womb, it can be at the previous uh, incision sites of the uh, womb, it can be outside of the womb, which plastered at the fat, fatty area in the, in the tummy. So all this area, we call it atopic pregnancy. Uh, however, the most common one will be at the tube there. The rest is quite, um, the, 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 the frequency will be uh, slightly lower. And uh, is, um, there, there's various treatment. So um, the important is need to know whether it is inside or outside. That is the first stage. 
or first steps that you need to know whether is this a normal pregnancy or atopic pregnancy. Molar pregnancy is something that actually there's maybe there's baby inside, maybe there's no baby inside, but it's just that the genetic uh, structure why is it's like you no, know, it's not normal. So it, it won't give you a normal pregnancy. So most of the time they will um, grow faster compared to normal pregnancy, but sometimes you cannot find a baby inside. And usually when they bleed, they bleed a lot. And the, the rest of other things is like you no know, uh, cervix issue, uh, vagina issue. Sometimes you we will have some infection down there, or we will have some in, uh, injury or some uh, erosion because of maybe after session in the course or uh, some uh, injury occur. Then all these things can cause local effect of the bleeding. Looking at the uh, picture on the other side, actually you can compare between implantation bleeding and period. Actually, a lot of time people thought that that is the period, but actually it's not. They thought that they are having period, so but actually it's having an implantation bleed. How you differentiate between both is, I mean, if you have period, most of the time the period feeling will be the same. But one day, one day, there'll be one day, you feel that it's a bit weird. Why this month is slightly different? I feel like, you know, a bit uh, nauseated means you feel like want to vomit. Sometimes you feel like keep on wanting to go, uh, go, go, go to pass out urine. And maybe, you know, some women, they will have premenstrual syndrome, you no know, very moody. Uh, everyone also like become a devil to them. No, 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 not all the women, eh? a lot of women. Annoying. Uh. <laughs> then uh, suddenly this kind of feeling don't have, then that could be not your period. So this is one of the uh, uh, things that you can notice it as well. And if for the implantation bleed, the bleeding is just a little bit, they, they, they always will complain that it, um, this month my menses is very little, doesn't behave like before, only one or two days, just a little. So you need to think that I may be having a pregnancy rather than I'm having a, uh, a period. Then the duration, yes, like what I said, very short, one or, one or two days. The other one will be four to seven days. Then uh, the bleeding very light, uh, not like the usual, and then the amount very minimum. And definitely, if let's say you think that this is not your usual pregnancy, uh, sorry, not your usual menses, then you just go for a UPT test. Uh, most of the time you will see two lines or one, one uh, slightly uh, lesser color compared to the other one. So this is the comparison between implantation bleeding and also period. Next slide. Doctor, can I ask a question? Oh, yes. uh, in yeah. your... Oh, okay. What is that? It's interesting. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, in your experience, you have seen many, many patients, of course, who come yes. to you with bleeding problems. Usually, what, what is the cause? What's the most common cause? Uh, most of the time, because um, those patients come over here, uh, uh, is due to threatened miscarriage for, for, from my cases. Oh. Most of them due to oh, threatened miscarriage. So they so come over the first here. Trimester? Yeah, during the first trimester. The most common one will be threatened miscarriage. So uh, I'll, I'll try my best to, to help them to stabilize the pregnancy. And oh, uh, so even though if, let's say, we don't do anything, we know that 90% of them will be, will be safe. But uh, yeah, we are not God, you see. We cannot predict yeah, who is the 90% and the other one, yeah. So uh, yeah. who is the 10%. So usually everyone come over here, we will try our best to, to support the pregnancy. Uh, mentally, giving yeah. uh, medication. And the other thing yeah. is very important, also MC, very important. What's <laughs> that? That's oh, true. MC? <laughs> MC, yeah. <laughs> uh, women need to rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Because you cannot let them have the mental stress and body stress. Cannot. So yeah, all these things right. is trying to help them to sail through the pregnancy. Mm, yeah, that's very yeah. true. Maybe sometimes because yeah. in the first trimester they've not yet seen, they don't have you know the tummy is it big yet? Yes, so, yes, yes. Okay, everything is like normal. Mm. Okay, so now we come to this. Uh, the next, the next slide. This one is uh, talking about the miscarriage. Okay. Yeah. Um, I purposely show these two pictures because you will see things come out. Then some, some people will say, hey, what is this? Huh? It doesn't look like blood. Yes, it, it is not a blood. It is just a soft tissue. So this is the tissue of a pregnancy. We call it product of conception. Uh, it's not baby. It's just tissue because some uh, most of the time the baby haven't formed yet. Um, yes, How many weeks uh, from, is this? The, um, this one will be about five weeks uh, or four right? weeks. Yeah, uh, be, uh, you, you can't see a, a, a well-formed shape kind of a baby, a yeah. very small baby. Yeah, just like like let's say you reach up to seven, eight weeks like that, usually you can see the uh, very the smaller size kind of a yeah, baby form kind of a, a tissue. 
So um, the, the other one will be much more smaller. So um, you, you usually they won't come out so clean. This is like after washing it. So if let's say that there's a lot of blood clots and sometimes you, you just you know, wash with the blood. Once the blood clots wash away, then you can see this kind of uh, whitish thing kind of a uh, tissue, pink color, slight pink. Some sometimes we want patient to to to, to easily identify. We we say uh, it looks like um, chicken meat, so it, people would think that oh okay it does it does looks like chicken meat. So um, the symptoms of the miscarriage in the first trimester will be vaginal bleeding. Uh, definitely they they will have pain, crampy pain. Um, like sometimes pain? pain. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Sometimes pain comes first, then after that will be bleeding. The other uh, you can go uh, the other way around. Then um, they, they can have some discharge. If the discharge got, got foul smelling, that even worse because we don't know whether it's in, infected or not. Then um, they might suddenly lose the pregnancy feeling. Like initially they got like nausea, vomiting, they feel very lethargy. Lethargy means weak. That is because of the hormone pregnancy. Uh, we call it progestogen. All these things will make them feel very weak and feel like tired, want to sleep. But once uh, the pregnancy fails, the progestogen level drops, then all these symptoms will be uh, uh, gone. So that is also one of the things that tell us whether this pregnancy will sail through or not. Yeah. Uh, following this happening, if uh, you have this um, discharge, and then after mm -hmm. that, will you have a full bleeding like period? Yeah, if let's say the pregnancy is unable to sustain the, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the, the miscarriage might happen, bleeding will keep on increasing uh, the amount. And uh, slowly, they will feel like, oh, the menses is coming already. The pain yeah. will be increasing, the bleeding will increasing, yeah. During, during the, when the tissue want to pass out during that moment, some of the women will complain that, uh, I feel like I want to pass out motion. Then suddenly, prrk, one thing come up, then they know that, oh, yeah, it's that thing. Then uh, when the tissue comes out, usually they will feel kind, uh, some kind of uh, relief feeling because it's really quite pain. It's just the, the same feeling for a guy uh, to feel it. It's like you really feel you want to pass out the motion. You constipate for a few days. Then after that, once you pass out, that kind of uh, relief feeling. So that is how I describe for a guy for, for a guy to understand. Yeah, so it's important for the fathers to know as well. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, so we go to the next slide. Okay, so this is a topic pregnancy. I purposely show you the picture. This is when we go in and do the labra, uh, uh, we do a surgery. This is what we call keyhole surgery, laparoscopy. You can see there's a bulging effect. Actually, the baby is sitting inside. You can you can you can really uh, observe the bluish color over there. So this tube is enlarged. It's enlarged. You compare to the other side, you can see the tube, which is not enlarged, is very thin, like a tube-like structure. But on the other side, it's actually it, it's like and large already. Then if if we if we cut and open up the that area, then actually you can pull out the product of conception. Um, the, uh, the method of operation is totally depend on uh, whether the both side tube is okay or not. If both side tube is okay, usually we'll, we will cut, we remove the whole tube. But let's say um, like on the other diagram, you, what you see is like they are cutting out and then pull out the uh, the product of conception. This is what we call solving gosh It means we open a hole and we pull out the POC. We wash the tube. We stop the bleeding. If we can, we will suture back the, the, the tube so that we try our best to preserve the final tube. Because if let's say the final tube is also gone, the, the woman only got one option means you, you, they need to go for IVF uh, pregnancy in the future. So uh, this is how we try to preserve the, the, the last tube. If let's say both tube is okay, then definitely we will remove the defect tube. So yeah. this ectopic ectopic, yeah. Sorry, with ectopic pregnancy, the pregnancy must always be terminated. The, no yes, yes, you're right, because there's no way for us to to, to keep it. And uh, uh, But the, 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 the matter will be different. Sometimes we can use medication, sometimes we need to use uh, surgery. I see. And, and at what advanced stage will the uh, product of um, conception be? Usually within mm -hmm. pregnancy. You, you mean at what stage is it? Oh, yeah, at what stage, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, okay, it depends on the on the size. Huh? For the tubes, mm -hmm. usually for five to six weeks like that, you can be able to identify already. And most of the time, we can see, sometimes we can see baby heart pumping inside as well. Uh, but during that stage, it's quite near to ruptured state already. 
if let's say at the angle side, angle side, uh, uh, pregnancy tends to ca uh, can move on a bit further. Um, if let's say hope happen at the ovary, ovary also can move on a bit further. At the scar as well, at the cervix as well, at the at the tummy, at the at the tummy actually at the fat layer, uh, omentum layer, what we call, can actually grows up to uh, twenty weeks. Sometimes we we sometimes we we thought that is at the normal pre is a normal pregnancy situated inside the womb, you know actually is outside for because the the omentum or the fat itself got a lot of blood vessel that can can actually su supply nutrient to the baby so the baby actually can grow so it depends on the sign yeah um, okay once you take the the baby out uh, in ectopic yeah. pregnancy because even though there's yeah. a heartbeat it cannot survive anyway so you need to terminate the pregnancy right yes you're right uh we we try to okay. diagnose uh we try our best uh, we try our best of to course. diagnose before the fetal heart happen because you got yeah. more option but if, let's say we yes. can see fetal heart ready then the, the treatment option will be less so usually surgery mm -hmm. will be much more better mm -hmm. compared to other option yeah and uh about the bleeding will bleeding stop right away after that or um... yes yes definitely definitely oh, have to okay so it's <laughs> different from when you have uh, uh what do you call it just now the slide before this uh, uh so miscarriage miscarriage yes yep you mean so, uh com compared to the three okay miscarriage yeah. actually you sometimes that there's uh okay that mission got more option we can mm. we can wait conservative mm, yes. you can wait for about a month like that if you really want to huh? then mm. sometimes they can just pass out like that then you don't need to go through anything um if let's say uh you want to use medication yes we can uh, but in Malaysia, we don't have the oral treatment. Uh, in overseas, yes, we have. But in Malaysia, we cannot because uh, for government, it's very good trying to safeguard our uh, our people not to terminate to uh, having a, any termination of pregnancy at home. Yes. So uh, yes. that's why we didn't import the medication. But we have some medication which we uh, insert into the vagina. So that will help uh, us to, to, to settle uh, without any using uh, sur uh, surgery method. The, then the subsequent one will be surgery. Uh, um, the patient need to discuss with doctors because I cannot tell you, uh, it's totally case by case. I cannot tell you which one is uh, better or prefer because it is totally depending on the situation and the patient uh, choice as well. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is molar pregnancy. You can see there's no baby inside. And there's a lot of wraps inside, so we, we always call it like a you know, wrap like uh, structure inside. What are those? You, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are those then, uh, fat? This, no, it's not fat; it's tissue. But the tissue cannot form into a uh, natural baby, so it, it become like an abnormal tissue. Keep on growing inside. Um, but it's not cancerous. Uh, yeah, it can lead to cancer if we don't oh, if we I don't see. settle it earlier. So um, yes, so definitely once we see this thing, we will try yeah. our best to clean it up. Then we need to follow up with the hormone to to check the hormone going down trend until zero. I mean until negative yeah. Then yeah. that means we, we we settle the issue already. And uh, yeah. this surgery always come with uh, a lot of bleeding. So um, sometimes we need to load it. We need to load the patient with blood first before we proceed for the evacuation. So that is very important. When you mean load the patient with blood, as in uh, the the blood from the blood donors? Yes, you are right. Yes, sometimes we do need sometimes because uh, once we initiate the evacuation, the patient can lose blood very fast, very fast. So sometimes we need to load it first. Yeah. And okay. Is this so common? we. Mm. Uh, I you know, yeah. the, um, compared to ectopic pregnancy, which we've all heard about, but molar pregnancy is something not. Um, is it common, Malaysia or molar pregnancy? Malaysia? Molar pregnancy. Uh, I, from my personal uh experience, mm. less mm. common compared to the ectopic. Ectopic will be slightly higher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. molar pregnancy, the tissues inside it actually forms from the egg, so it's not. It's not like. Something that comes out from the walls of the uterus. No, okay. Molar pregnancy very uh is actually very um in the, the theory is very interesting. It's an empty mm. egg sometimes, an empty egg inside. Oh, then okay. Never two knew of that. our sperm, two of our sperm enter into it. So mm. actually, if let's say we use scientific idea, we actually can clone a person, the same person from from, from this uh maneuver. 
But the problem is God doesn't allow. So it become a mola. If let's say it become a human, actually I'm cloning myself uh, uh, in this empty egg. So but, but, but nat natural God doesn't allow, so it become mola. The other idea is actually the, the egg, the, ge the, the genetic is inside. Then two sperm goes in. It becomes three kind of a genetic inside. So because of that, it, 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 it can form a, a, a part of, one part is a, a, a baby, but the other part, it becomes a molar, a molar tissue. And if that happens, the diagnosis once will be uh, slightly uh, difficult compared to a, a just a no pure molar pregnancy without any baby inside. So molar pregnancy can actually result in a fully formed baby as well? Yes, yes. Sometimes it can. So, uh, so that will give us more issue because difficult to identify. Wow. Okay, that's something new. That's yep. Today, okay, maybe we should have like a whole uh, other discussion for. Yeah, for this, this is just a brief idea so that when yeah, when bleeding occurs during the pregnancy, you know, at least the idea hit in, then you can further discuss mm -hmm. with your respective ONG doctor. Yeah, that you could be any one of these problems. Like, okay, uh, yeah. are there? The other problems that, that the, the next problems. one will be um okay this is what I, what i say the cervical e uh, erosion or atropions okay um i always tell my my patient or her husband the cervix itself looks like our lips as well okay our lips like that over here no matter how i scratch it it won't bleed but if i scratch it inner side it will bleed so look at the the, the lips huh? i always call this lip this uh, uh looks like angelina jolie lips Mm -hmm. very sexy <laughs> but it, it, it can bleed easily so when you go and uh, scratch it uh, i mean i uh, i i'm a fan of angelina jolie i, I don't have any <laughs> intents to okay but what mean. i want to say is the lips is totally you no know, com coming out like that so yeah. uh yeah. once you got some erosion no uh yes mm -hmm. then it cause bleeding but all with all this thing you still need a pap smear you need a pap smear to confirm that the the, the the tissue, the cells, is okay. It's healthy. So what it causes just the erosion? erosion? Yeah. What causes? Oh, because of, because of the lips, it exposes the inner inner lips uh, to outside. This one, the second one, sometimes can be uh, infection. So uh, infection can cause this kind of uh, erosion as well. And the third one will be injury, abrasions after session. The cause all these things can happen as well. Uh, and infection yeah. can be uh, from just about anything at all, or are there several? Uh, yeah. Usually. Usually, it's due to um, the infection at the lower part. Uh, 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 few organisms, some can be sexual transmitted, some uh, it's not. It's just uh, uh, coincident. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take, let's take a look at the next. Okay. Slide. Yeah. So, this one you can see is a cervical infection. You can see the whitish color that looks like pus. So, and you can see the, the reddish color over there. That's infected so that that's the reason then you compare it on the other side that's normal cervix so you definitely you can know wow this is normal the other side definitely there's some problem inside so is usually we will hmm? this is, is worse than yeah, yeah yeah it's past it's past it's past it okay. is past oh uh, wow. yeah it's a past right. then, uh, yes then so the patient the sorry a doctor so the patient will yeah. feel pain when something they will like feel this? a bit pain a bit uh heaty down there Foul, mm. smell, foul smelling, itchy. Mm. Um, uh, the, the, the the smell some sometimes they can describe as uh, like a dead fish smell. On oh and off, they'll, yeah. they'll, com oh, they'll complain to you. But sometimes they feel shy to tell us. So uh, mm. uh, usually we will ask them as well. And then they will just uh, they will, they will just tell us. Then we will harvest this kind of uh, mm. discharge, send for tests yeah. to see what kind of organism is that. Then mm. we will treat uh, with. Uh, with the uh, correct antibiotics and after the infection settled uh we will, we will perform the pet smear to check whether is there any other abnormal yeah. tissue or not the yeah. infection you need, to settle, hmm, you need to settle the infection what? because Sorry. infection can trigger yeah. the contract yes. in the future yeah. so if we don't yeah. settle it they hmm. might end up with freedom labor in oh. future okay, okay and while all this is going on um the bleeding is occurring yeah, all these things because it creates erosion, so uh, mm -hmm. sometimes can cause some mild bleeding. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. This is local local issue. It's not because of the pregnancy, but it's a local issue. Okay. Yes, okay. 
So this is for the, I think for the first pregnancy, uh, first trimester. Yes, so we move on, can you move on? Okay, so this is bleeding in second trimester. So okay. uh, the, the we divided into placenta previa, mm -hmm. placenta yes. abruption, uterine rupture, vasa mm -hmm. previa, premature labor, mm -hmm. And also, we go back to cervical and vaginal injury, polyps, or cancer. We go through uh, one by one. Don't worry. All right. Okay. Move on. We move on to the next slide. Okay. So, this is placenta previa. Placenta previa, actually, uh, for you guys to know, is like the placenta situated at the lower part of the womb. So, uh, we de we de depending on how much of the placenta cover, you can see uh, on the uh, cartoon on the pictures of the other side, not the ultrasound uh, picture, the, the, the cartoon picture, the, the placenta for the first one is at the normal location. The second one is actually at the at the door, at the door junction there. So we call it type two. If let's say cover up partially at the door side, we call it type three. If let's say everything covered up together, we call it type four. So this is how we classify it, but don't worry. The idea is very simple. As long as at the edge there or covering the, the door, the door means the, the cervix opening, the, that woman cannot deliver naturally. She need to go, in, uh, she need to deliver via uh, Caesar. So that is the, the whole idea. And because the placenta is so close to the door, so sometimes when the door shaking a bit, they will cause bleeding because there's a minor detachment at, uh, for the placenta at, at the placenta side with the womb side because of the, the door slightly move a bit, then you, they will shake a bit, detach, then it will cause bleeding. Usually so that- the uh, this, is a very, It's a very sensitive matter. Uh, yeah, when, when, yeah when, they, when, they, when they situated at the lower side, because mm -hmm. when we walk or some, sometimes you know, during uh, 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 second trimester, some couples they will have some uh, uh, sexual intercourse because of uh, that thing. Then you will shake the inner door. So the inner door one is shake. Then you will shake the placenta. That will cause some bleeding. Uh, usually the bleeding will stop by itself. Uh, it will it will bleed just uh, minimally. Then uh, for the pregnancy will continue once the the pregnancy uh, goes to near term already. Occasionally they will start to bleed a lot because. Um, maybe the contraction sets in, cause a more uh, major detachment at the placenta side, then that will cause more bleeding. Uh, the, sever the severity itself will help us to decide when one to deliver uh, the baby. Doctor, so this is placenta previa. Mm. Uh, oh, since we're on the subject, just a basic question. Why is it dangerous no. uh, if the placenta were to be dispelled first? instead of the baby oh because um the placenta is at the lower side so uh if let's say things want to comes out the placenta will comes out first so that is that's why uh they will start bleeding and the placenta start to detach first before the the, the baby um uh, because and then the placenta is blocking the, the 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 passage so the baby there's no way to come out so in order to let the baby come out you need to deliver the placenta first which is Cannot it cannot it cannot happen like that, so that's why placenta previa. If let's say blocking the the passage, we cannot allow uh, the the woman go through normal delivery. But don't you worry, um, the placenta usually we will keep on checking uh, at the side there because the placenta near the lower segment of the womb, they will keep on enlarged and uh, elongated uh, throughout the whole pregnancy. So once the lower side, uh, lower lower side of the womb elongated. Some of the women are so lucky enough that the, uh, the placenta actually can move up. So when it's moved up, it will be away from the door side. So because of that, the woman uh, can uh, have a natural birth again. So usually we will have a final decision at like 30, 34 weeks, 36 weeks. We will roughly know already this woman can deliver naturally or have to go for Caesar. Yeah. So this is placenta previa. From the ultrasound side, you can see the cervical canal and you can see the placenta actually is blocking the cervical canal. So this is type three, type three placenta previa. If this is a term baby, the woman cannot go through normal delivery. Okay, uh, let us move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is uh, placenta abruption. Placenta abruption uh, uh, basically is detachment of the placenta. 
cause inner inner side bleeding. So you can you look at the picture itself. Um, the, the there's a blood clot form, uh, mm. at the at the base of the placenta. So yeah. sometimes it's formed inside. The blood doesn't come out, so the woman won't have any bleeding. But the woman mm. will have uh, quite severe pain at the tummy. Some of the abrupt uh, abruption occur. The blood will yeah. seep out, so the woman will have uh, abdominal pain and also yeah. some bleeding. Um, sometimes the, the pain can over, sometimes it cannot. So um, whether or not to deliver, it depends on the situation during that time. Whether these things happen, affect the mother, or, uh, the, the, the baby or not. If let's say affect the baby or the mother, then the de delivery, uh, then we might need to deliver earlier or uh, compared to just sit, on, uh, sit and wait. Of course. This is actually okay. the placenta being, I mean, um, ripped away from the uh, walls yeah the uh, it, it, it detached from the oh, from the detaches, yeah. from the womb so okay and, uh, and what causes it, that okay it, uh, it um, can activities. be due to yeah it can be due to external pressure false mm -hmm. uh, injury some mm -hmm. shaking effect some suddenly loss of uh, pressure from the pregnancy itself sometimes it's just leaking because the woman got a lot of water inside leak out very fast then some uh, negative pressure create then it will have a this kind of a detachment sometimes it's because of the hypertension from the mother so all these things can happen yeah all right okay i'm, I'm not all sure right. what the the ultrasound picture that's so hard to make out so we, and we just okay the ultrasound, you look at the angle the angle pointed that is the blood clots when you Which and ones? then you look at the, the, the angle pointing at the top part the there, arrow, that oh, is okay. the, right, yeah. the arrow. Yeah. Mm. Then the placenta is actually uh, or the, the P, they, they, they mm. label that as P, that is the placenta. So you can see the bleeding occur, then the placenta is at the bottom part. The, all the color is uh, the baby heart and also the, the, the umbilical cord. So when you can see mm. color inside the heart and umbilical cord means the baby mm. is still there. Uh, the blood flow is still there. If there's no blood flow, when we put in mm. color doctor, there will be no mm. color uh, shown up. I see. Yeah. All right. Okay. 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 Um, so this is the the other one is a uterine rupture. Uterine rupture. You look at the baby face, uh, next to the baby face over there. You can see the membrane bulging out. So that is our usual uh Caesar sign. We perform at that area, but sometimes the one that looks the, like the, an appendix. Is that the one? Uh, the one? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it something bulging right, out, sorry. something a membrane mm -hmm. bulging out besides the baby face. So uh, uterine rupture is because of the previous scar. Uh, maybe due to seizure, maybe due to uh, I removed the fibroid or any operation done on the uh, on the uterus before, on the womb before. Then uh, some of the womb, they heal quite well. Some of the womb, they don't. So they become thinner. When they heal back also, they become thinner. So once the uterus uh, enlarge because of the pregnancy, the womb enlarge because of the pregnancy, you will become more thinner. It's just like balloon, you see? Balloon, when I blow bigger and bigger, it will become thinner and thinner. So until one moment, that part is so thin that it cannot, um, uh, it cannot, um, it cannot hold on further, then it will just rupture. So uh, once that happens, usually mother will have a very great pain, but definitely before that, mother will have pain really. Uh, usually we were able to identify before rupture. Rupture is something like uh, very sudden, suddenly happen, and then most of the time the, the, the patient need to rush to hospital. Uh, yeah. If that thing happen, yeah, if that thing happen, then mother might bleed inside, uh, might, might, might cause some uh, uh, complication to the mother and also very bad uh, effect to the baby as well. We might lose the baby as well. So the bleeding will occur after uh, the uterine ruptures. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because yes. then there's a lot of blood. Yes. yes. Sometimes it's just the we, we call it the Dehesion is give way. So during that moment we still have time to react on it. But if let's say really ruptured, then the bleeding will, can be very fast. Yeah. So All this right. is another another possibility of bleeding. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so this is, we call it Vasa Previa. Vasa Previa is actually the vessel from the placenta from uh, connect to the baby, exposed at the lower part of the, of the doorway. So if let's say we, uh, sometimes when the membrane ruptured, or the, the, the water comes out of the membrane ruptured, it will tear the, the, the vessel 
and uh, the blood will, will, will come out very fast. Uh, if this thing happens, usually we will lose the baby first. Mother, um, mother will be quite stable, but baby, we, we can lose the baby very fast. The other possibility is sometimes uh, when we rupture the membrane, then we can accidentally hit the vessel as well. So this thing can happen. It's what's very, very rare. Between, very rare. Sorry, hmm? What's the difference between Vasa Previa and Placenta Previa? Uh, placenta Previa is the whole the whole placenta patch okay. over there, but Vasa is okay. only vessel. Only vessel. Okay. So uh, usually, let's say this kind of bleeding, uh, the blood will come from the baby rather than the mother. So you will lost the baby first. But very, very rare. Don't, don't worry. Very rare. It's just nice to know. Um, and uh, you yeah. and this thing is for us it's like um, something for us as a doctor we always keep in our mind so every time when we do uh, examination before we want to rupture the membrane we will always tell ourselves to check whether this thing uh, present or whether, whether this thing present or not. it's kind of a, like our our uh, usual uh, checking uh, idea in our brain it means when we check down there we need to go and feel it see whether got this thing around or not before we rupture the membrane. Okay, so the next one, um, this is like some local issue. Um, you, you have seen uh, erosion, you have seen some infection. So this is polyps. Polyps is, is like a small fibroid, uh, very, very small, 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 uh, small fibroid. It, uh, situated at near the, the cervix there. So sometimes it, it, it will just protrude out. And this kind of polyps easily bleed. One, you touch a bit, you will bleed. You touch a bit, you will bleed. So um, if let's say we, we see this kind of polyps, um, it will give um, the woman's false alarm bleeding. Keep on bleeding, thought that it's from the pregnancy, but it's not, it's from the polyps. So we just remove the polyps enough. We, we And it's very simple, uh, it's very easy to remove. Uh, we can just remove in the clinic, um, just five minutes work, then things settle. Uh, most of the time, women will feel very happy because this kind of issue uh, will haunt them for a few months, haunt them for a few months until like no got one doctor, Go and look down there and notice this thing. We take it out, and then the woman will feel very happy oh, because really. the whole bleeding uh, situation will just go away. Yeah, well, it yeah. will harm them for a few months if they don't go and see a doctor lah immediately. Uh, yeah, or or maybe they just go to a, a, a family doctors yeah. which they are not yeah. familiar with checking down there. Then mm. maybe uh, people won't won't able to to know yeah. it's due to problems. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay, um, the next the next one will be okay. So these are the uh, the first and the second trimester. The third trimester mm -hmm. usually the the courses will be the same like uh, mm -hmm. second trimester. They sh yeah. sharing the same courses. Uh, mm -hmm. Added on the other one is you are in labor. So you are in labor. Okay. Please come over. Uh, we, okay. we call it show. Usually the bleeding oh, yes. will, looks like mixed with mucus, so it doesn't really bleed. Uh, a lot like that so don't worry just come over to the hospital no need to rush and huh? don't rush huh? please just come over to the hospital we will check for you if let's say the the service still closed you still can go home no issue about it so what to do first you must check with your doctors um yes you have to wear pads because uh by by that you can keep on track the amount of bleeding the color the smells whether it got blood clots or not so when the doctor asks you to quantify it you're able to tell us how much uh, by, by telling us like, I bleed for two packs or bleed for three packs or half pack so something like that. Don't use tampon because you don't know whether it can create any infection or just sending some bacteria uh, from below. So don't use tampon. Um, during bleeding, I don't think anyone dare to have uh, sexual intercourse during that time, but sometimes it happens after. So you just um, come over, don't worry. Uh, it's not because of the sexual intercourse cause it, it's just coincident, no? something there then sexual yeah. intercourse cause it so don't blame yourself uh yeah. for having a sexual intercourse that is very natural so never blame yourself mm -hmm. for that uh okay. emergency situation um if let's say you have a severe pain cramp at mm -hmm. the lower abdomen or severe bleeding yeah. vagina discharge with tissue you feel dizzy oh. because you bleed too yeah. much already or you got yeah. high grade fever because of infection you have to come immediately that is for the emergency situation Uh, you mentioned just now about uh, don't use tampon. Is this also for those who are not pregnant? Generally, you would uh, rec uh, recommend yes, using pads yeah, over tampon. Yeah. Yes. I mean, since yes. we were talking about the subject. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so because tampon is very difficult for you to find, and then you, you you don't know whether you will send some bacteria or goes up. No? During pregnancy, oh. it, it's more important because sometimes because oh, of uh, some leaking issue with the yeah. with the bleeding. If let's say leaking, sometimes when we give antibiotics, we able to uh, overcome it. But because okay. maybe you no, know, we have uh, sending up some bacteria already. We can't yeah, fight the bacteria, yeah. then it will lead to preterm labor. Yeah, I see. Okay, well, that was quite uh, that was very informative and very interesting. Uh, so that was oh, not okay. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. From uh, hospital, Columbia Asia Hospital, it's Kanda Putri. He is the consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. Okay, if uh, you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, you can very well just type your questions in the comment section below, and the doctor will be able to answer your questions right away. Okay, for now, we already have a few questions here. Let me pick some, uh, starting with. From Karen Lim, <laughs> okay. How much bleeding is considered normal in early pregnancy, uh, and which amount should it raise a red flag for mothers to seek medical help? Yeah, very good question. Okay, um, okay. Frankly speaking, it's very difficult for me to tell you the amount. Uh, for a normal mm. pregnancy, shouldn't bleed, shouldn't bleed. If you got bleeding, you 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 come mm. and let us check. Um, implantation bleed and fetal miscarriage. Frankly speaking, we are not gonna we, we are unable to tell which one is implantation, yeah. which one is uh, yeah. pregnancy scary. So for for my own practice, usually I will yeah. tell the patient and I will give medication help to support because yes. I I just don't want to you know um, sometimes so mis misjudgment then um, yeah the 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 situation doesn't uh, go to the direction that that I thought yeah it, it should be normal or something like that yeah. So the best thing is for um, if, if anyone has bleeding, the best thing is just to go and see a doctor. Yes, yes, yes. See you like they're in JB. <laughs> Too far away, don't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not sure where Miss Carolyn is saying, but okay, that's a thought. Um, here's another one, Miss Singi. For ladies with polyps, should they remove the polyp first before planning for the baby? Um. Uh, okay, some some couples they will go for the pre-pregnancy uh, checking, uh, pre yeah. pre-pregnancy checking first. Uh, so if you think that pap smear is one of it, so when we perform pap smear, we immediately were able to know whether you got polyps or not. So if let's say there is, then definitely yeah. we will remove on the spot for you. Um, so that will cover your your issue. But uh, sometimes when you got pregnant without knowing you got polyps, um, yeah. that is the that is quite common happen. So, mm -hmm. so beginning they were thought that it's rather miscarriage. They continue the medication, mm -hmm. then until twenty plus weeks still bleeding and non-stop. Then yeah. finally they come to see doctor. Then uh, we check down there. We notice there's polyps over there. Remove it, then mm -hmm. the whole situation yeah. become normal. So, so that yeah. is the quite a normal uh, storyline. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, so if you want to really know whether you got polyps or not, just go for pap smear, and then definitely we able to know. Mm, okay, All right. And uh, doctor, this uh, it, it's not just something that occurs uh, in the uterus or the cervix. It can also occur anywhere because I've heard of polyps in the colon. Ah, yes, yes, you're right. You're right. Polyps actually is, it can be everywhere. So just like this one, uh, you, you it, they can actually happen inside as well. So the whole yeah. cavity inside actually everywhere also can have polyps. Uh, it's just that we we wouldn't keep on telling women that uh, um, you know, go and check see whether got polyps or not. Most of the time of course, we don't yeah. we don't go and disturb the woman. The woman yeah. will have bleeding issue most of the time with polyps. So mm -hmm. during that time, they will come mm -hmm. to us, and only we will start to think of whether there's polyps inside. Or not. Yeah, but if the polyp is really uh, in the inner part of the uterus, will a pap smear be able to tell whether you have? Polyps uh, if let's say it's the inner part, inner part in mm -hmm. the cavity inside, no, we we can't. Yeah. Pap smear is only checking over here. Checking okay. over here. So oh, I see. This is, okay. uh, the white color is fibroid. Like just let just let's say this is a polyp. So when mm -hmm. we when we check inside, then we, I can take these white color things out. But uh, yeah. the past only checking here. We we can't know anything inside. Usually, let's say big polyps, when we do scan, mm -hmm. we do we, we we can see the uh, no see. something yeah, looks yeah. like really polyp, yeah. right? mm -hmm. but it, not, it must be big, like, it cannot be small. Small cannot difficult to see. Yeah, yeah. but if it is that big, something that you that uh, doctors can remove. Uh, yes, we, we, we can. Um, you, when we the woman control. is still pregnant? Uh, no, 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 definitely not. Um, oh, okay. I mean, yes, that is before pregnant. Uh, during mm -hmm. pregnancy, we, 
do anything. We just let the pregnancy uh, continue. Uh, and actually, the polyps inside the cavity during pregnancy, most of the time, won't give rise any issue to the woman. They won't cause any bleeding as well. Yep. I see. Um, doctor, when, they are, uh, when a woman is pregnant, is she able to go through a laparoscopic surgery? For any reason? Okay. Uh, okay. Depending on the situation, if let's say the uterus is still small, mm. um, I have uh, I have uh, some training uh, in in India last time and also overseas. Uh, they did perform some mm. circlage surgery laparoscopically mm. during pregnancy, but the uterus must be at fourteen to sixteen weeks. You cannot be more than that because after 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 that the the, the view can be very difficult. So, um, uh, so it can be performed, but depending on for what kind of a cost and uh, whether the risk and benefit, the benefit is outweigh the risk. If let's say yes, then we go through it. But if let's say yeah. no, then try to avoid surgery during pregnancy. I yeah. see. Okay, come. Let's move on to our next question uh, from Ms. S. P. Yang. Hi, Doctor Quack. If one is facing during pregnancy, is it due to the mother's lack of nutrition? Hmm, that's interesting. What do you say, doctor? One facing being during pregnancy is it due to a lack of any nutrition. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, no. I mean, it, it doesn't relate like that. Mm -hmm. Unless uh, that woman will have some bleeding disorder, that is a different issue. Oh. Uh, but if, let's say for the, I mean, bleeding disorder means um, it's not during pregnancy. I can bleed with yeah. um, without pregnancy. I can bleed as well. So that is mm -hmm. yes. Then you might due to some lack of a nutrient but for the natural bleeding during pregnancy most of the time it's due to that uh, the, the causes that we mentioned yeah yeah maybe you can come back another time doctor and and uh, have an episode where we will be thinking about bleeding uh, among women who are not pregnant because sometimes bleeding tends to happen also and we don't know why okay well yep. that's for it Okay. okay, that's all the questions that we have for today. Just to get a little, um, you know, to know you a little bit more, which is something that I should have done in the beginning. So, how are you at uh, Iskandar Putri? Yeah, I'm from Iskandar Putri. How long have you been uh, practicing there? Uh, three, four years. Over here. Over oh, in, I see. Yeah, I see. Years. And you're originally from JB? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. And have yeah. you always wanted to be a gynecologist and obstetrician? Uh, I beg your pardon? Have you always wanted to be a gynecologist and obstetrician? Is this your lifelong okay. ambition? Um, now, yes. Before that, no. <laughs> oh, before that, no. Okay. How did you? Uh, uh, okay, last time I wanted to be a sp either spine surgeon or new neurosurgeon. Oh. Uh, but my, my, my brother asked me to, to study ONG because my, my, my brother uh, 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 during that time was in Taiwan. Then He's he said Taiwan there. Uh, he's a doctor. He said Taiwan oh, over here ONG quite okay. okay. So I want to study ONG. You study ONG in Malaysia as well. I said, okay, fine, no problem. Then I just focus uh, uh, in ONG. Then a few years down the road, uh, after I complete my study, everything, I call him out. I said, hey, how is your ONG over there? I said, no, I'm doing pits now. I said, what? Why you didn't tell me? I said, I, 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 I don't know. You want to know? <laughs> And so there's one that, and one ONG in the family. Yeah, my, my, my brother keep on continuing pits over there, then I just continue ONG. Then until now, somehow, um, I think um, it's, it's quite fun. I, I, I don't think it's a uh, it, uh, wrong direction. I think God will send me to ONG yeah. because yeah. Uh, ONG is kind of, uh, we mix things, everything together. We know a bit ultrasound, we know a bit uh, medication, we can do surgery. Um, yes, yes, uh, yes, we, yes. we can do laparoscopy and then now we can do yes. some uh, cosmetic things as well so it's everything together like, quite oh, quite interesting okay. yeah yeah okay is that something that you do as well doctor the cosmetic surgery um cosmetic actually is like um more towards uh perineal part yeah, uh, yeah. um we wow. can use some equipment or some surgery to 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 heal to, to make the muscle uh, uh, perform better uh, or looks That's another uh, topic. Uh, yeah, that's the that topic, and then it, oh, it must be proof with, yeah. it, it must be proof with picture, but it's very difficult. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, maybe not that, maybe yeah, not yeah, that yeah. topic or one that very is difficult. You want to do lots of likes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last question, doctor. What's the best thing about your job? What's the best thing that you love about being a gynecologist and obstetrician? Best thing that I love. Okay. 
initially is the delivery part, but I'm quite used to the baby crying sound already. So <laughs> somehow so so used to it already. <laughs> so um I I I think um ONG because of that adrenaline rush, I like it. Because of uh you no know, things can happen very fast. And when, yeah. when we can handle the issue mm-hmm. well, we can protect the mother and the baby, and the outcome also you know, can tell the result immediately. Not like mm-hmm. other, some of the discipline, like, you know, okay, let's say stroke, uh, I treat stroke. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's a few years down the road, then you can see whether the patient recovered. So it's a bit potong yeah. steamer. But, but for <laughs> ONG, very fast, you see, if, if we do mm-hmm. things wrong, the outcome mm-hmm. immediately no. Then either I get screwed or what, whatever. Then... <laughs> If I can, if I can, uh, so funny, like, prevent, yeah, yeah, and that's 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 a true thing. Yeah, right? yeah. But if I can prevent it, then things happen, and uh, good things happen. Then we feel like oh, very, very happy because at yeah, least yeah. our effort you can see immediately. Then it, it pushes yes, us yeah. to be more efficient. Like we mm-hmm. want to do things before it happens. It keep on yeah. gives us that kind of uh, feeling. Yeah, so like that's different. Feet, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just like in any as well. Any doctors also behave the same thing. They when yeah. they can uh, save the life immediately, they they can feel that kind of uh, 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 how to say the um, greatness. Appreciate. They can feel like uh, right. yeah, they feel like they yeah. that that night they did something very good for for, mm. for for someone. They feel satisfied. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that was very 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 interesting. Um, so, Doctor, if you've got any uh, any parting words before we wrap up the show? Uh, uh, any uh, yeah, okay. Um, enjoy your MCO period uh, at <laughs> home. <laughs> so that we can see you nine I months later. I still my hands up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, I saw you're the funniest, funniest doctor. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> and gather your, your patients love you very much and look forward to their uh, appointment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the pain. Yeah. Okay, so we that was Dr. Sorry, Dr. Kwek Yek Song from yeah. the College Hospital in Skanda Putri, who is a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. Okay, so you've got any bleeding problems and whatnot, go and see him. He will make your day. Okay. I'm okay. okay, doctor, thanks very much for your time. Right. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode of Doctors Go Live. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>